right, guys. How's it going? All right, come on, guys. You've had lunch. Wake up now. All right. Um, my name is Amit. I am a developer evangelist for an outfit called Mashree. Uh, show of hands, how many of you have actually heard of Mashree? All right, this makes my job a little easier. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Mashree is an API management company, which means we help companies manage their APIs. Um, so we help them uh, deal with things like data, data throttling, rate limiting, mem caching, and all these API key provisioning things that usually a company has to handle. They do not have to handle, they can use our software to do that. Um, so a little bit about me. What does Amit do? Uh, the role of that I have, I get to play around with lots of APIs. That's really awesome, as we all know. Um, I get to build tools that actually help solve developer pain. I get to travel a lot, so I get to live rent-free in Manhattan. Um, so I get to do all those, maybe not the third one, but the other two are actually true. So um, speaking of unpacking, how many of you enjoy opening a thing like that? Those are really fun to open, right? No, they are not. They're a freaking pain to open. So much so that probably the only tool that's missing in this picture is an assault rifle so you can shoot yourself, right? Um, they're frustrating, they're really a pain, so much pain that there's actually a name for this frustration that you actually go through opening one of those packages. It's called Package Rage. It's called heightened levels of anger and frustration resulting from the inability to open hard to open packaging. There's actually a name for that. Apparently, internet has a name for everything. Even Amazon has what they call certified frustration-free packaging. So what they do is, instead of you going through the pain of opening those plastic packages, what they do is they get the packages out of the original packaging, they get the product out, they put it in a simple brown box, and they mail it to you. So they call it certified frustration-free packaging. Now contrast that some with something like an Apple product. Anyone who's bought an Apple product knows how beautiful an experience it is just to open the packaging, leave alone even using the product. Just opening that package is a wonderful experience. Now it turns out that's actually not a coincidence. Apple pays a lot of attention to that. So much so that they actually have a secret unboxing room. And what happens in that unboxing room is that they have these package designers who are sometimes stuck in this Apple secret room, and they're, all they're doing is unboxing packages. And there's an emotion analysis expert. I'm, I'm not making this up. This is true. There's an emotion analysis expert that's actually watching this guy open the packages. And they're trying to figure out which one is a better experience so that they can actually evolve on that and make that the real deal. Now that means two things. One, I'm just glad I'm not an app, Apple package designer. Um, two, it means that both Amazon and Apple are paying an awful lot of attention to the unboxing, unpackaging experience. And that's important because it sets the tone for the whole relationship they'll be having with that product. Now, think about this, that developers are users too, right? So why is it that we are not paying the same amount of attention that we usually pay to a product opening, the same kind of attention uh, to the first time the developer lands on your API portal? The first time the developer uses your API, that's the first interaction the developer is having with your API. So you're gonna either make it or you can break it, break that experience. And I feel we're not paying a lot of attention to that. And I have proof. This is a live screenshot from PayPal's website. I don't want to pick on PayPal, but I guess I am. Um, this is how I should go about using their API. So I'm supposed to click on x.com, a pop-up window will open up, a mini browser will open up, and I have to enter my login information, and some magic will happen, and I have I become a PayPal developer. I'm not really interested, because this is what I really want to do. Um, now here's this really awesome quote, I love this quote, uh, by Alan Kay, and it says, people who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. Now this is a 30-year-old 30 30 year old quote. I'm gonna completely tweak that and probably destroy it, but hopefully it'll convey the sentiment behind it. And pe that here it goes, people who are really serious about APIs should care about developer experience. 
And what that means is that the first thing you do is you treat your API like your product. I first heard this from John Sheehan last year, and it just blew up my mind. I'm like, this is a completely new way of actually looking at it. The minute you start looking at your API like it's your product, there's a dynamic shift in the way you actually deal with your API and you deal with your developers using your API. I'm going to go over 10 things that I think make a really awesome developer experience. And I say this wearing a developer hat, uh, looking at things from a developer mindset. Here are 10 things that I think are what developers are looking for. The first thing they're looking for is simplicity. They actually, as much as you want them to think that way, they actually do not give a hoot about how awesome your company is. They do not care how much money you're making. They do not care about any of those things. What they really care about is what your API can actually do for them. So the first time they land on your API portal, tell them what, they, what you can do for them. Do not get into the marketing gizmo. Uh, here's an example of Dwala's API. Now, this is what their website is. I can either code or I don't code. This is all it is. And I can you know, uh, navigate my way around it. Number two, be, be straightforward. Do not get all marketing on us. Keep that for your main, develop, main portal. The, div, the minute they get to developer.yourportal, that is not the place to get all marketing on them. That is the place to give them information. Do not hide the information like what's how much does it cost, what's the rate limit, uh, what do they have to do. Things like that, be straightforward. Here's an example of Twilio. One line, and I know exactly what Twilio does. Communications power business, Twilio powers communications. There's no, no, nothing hidden about that. Now, I think a lot of times what we always look at is what can my API do for developers? How can my API help developers? Well, another way to look at it is that how about answering the question, what can the developers actually stop worrying about if they use my API? Right? That's a completely different way of looking at it. So what can they stop doing if they use your API? What pain? are you solving? Now here's an example of Stripe. Stripe makes it easy to start accepting credit cards on the web today. One line, I know this is what I want to use if I want to do, deal with payments. Right? This is a different way of looking at it. Now the simplicity does not apply just to this part. It also applies to the ramp up process. So make sure you have a simple and fast sign up. Do not ask me a million questions. Please do not answer, ask me for my phone number or my social security, because that's just not going to happen. Just show me the sign up button, and let's, let's get started. So if you have a sign up process that actually looks like that, that's actually not going to fly. Now contrast that with something like, this is singly.com's API. And they have just two buttons. You sign up with GitHub or you sign up with Facebook, and that's it. In fact, on the next step, I'm actually making live API calls using their tool. Right? This is how what developers expect. This is how it should be. Uh, it's a really quick sign-up process. It's very effective. Now, uh, the developers might be familiar with this. In the, whole, in the developer land, we have what we call a Hello World app. What that really means is when you're learning a new language, the language should have some example of writing a very simple, basic Hello World app. And all that app does is that it prints Hello World on your screen. Uh, bringing the same uh, concept to the API world, have some way that actually developers can make a live API call or use your API within the first five minutes. If you do not catch their attention within the first five, max 10 minutes, developers are going to fly. They have lots of choices out there. They're busy, and they will not waste time on your API if it's too complicated to understand. I really like this big commerce button right over there. Build an app in just five minutes. What do you think that does for developer confidence? Right? Here's a developer looking at it, and it's like, well, I can actually build an app in five minutes. All right, let's, let's actually get started. Let me read the documentation or, or, or whatever examples are available. Now, this, I think, it is, at least to me, it's very important. Uh, developers usually are not coding at the time you expect them to code. Developers are usually coding on a Friday night with a bottle of beer while you are actually parting up. So the last thing you want to do for them is have them wait all the weekend for some dude to show up on a Monday morning to manually approve the API key. 
right? You have to have some way that these guys can actually get their keys either automatically assigned or have someone who's monitoring your API uh, regularly. So if a request comes by, have, the, uh, have that catered in, uh, in a reasonable amount of time. Do not keep them waiting. Uh, for instance, with, uh, with Mashery, we have over 150 APIs, and all open APIs get automatically API, get API key assigned automatically. You do not have to wait. You sign up for an open API, and uh, boom, you have an email with your, uh, with your API key. Next, be clear. Costs, limitations, tell them what to expect, and give them a free trial if, that, if your business model allows that. Give them a taste of it, and they will come back. Do not hide things like these. These are some things that developers expect, so put it out there. Uh, if it matches what developers are expecting, they will use your API. If not, they'll move on. But have it there. Uh, for instance, uh, on the left is an example of Foursquare with very clear rate limits uh, for the API calls. On the right is an example from SendGrid. Uh, with very clear laid out pricing slash email quota for their uh, API. Um, I, can uh, I can look at it and I can decide which one is actually uh, a good fit for me. This is probably the biggest pain point for developers, stellar, amazing documentation. Uh, I think there's some confusion and misunderstanding with what Stellar documentation means. Stellar documentation does not mean lots of documentation. It does not mean having pages and pages and pages of documentation. What it really means is that your API should be, API documentation should be complete, it should be up to date, and it should not use PDFs. I personally despise PDFs, and I know a lot of developers do, because one, that's not the way the web is supposed to be. Two, it's not searchable. Three, it's not easy to share. Uh, so. Stay away from the PDFs. Make sure all your parameters, all your descriptions, all your APIs are documented properly. And that makes it a proper documentation. This, for instance, is, again, Foursquare listing their API method, their, their parameters with complete description, responses, and things like that. Interactive documentation have some way that people can actually play around with their API. So a sandbox of sorts or a uh, console of sorts. Uh, for example, at Mastery, we have what we call an API Explorer, which came out of an open source project called IODocs. Now, this is something that we felt that the need for it internally, and we developed it, and we saw that there was a lot of interest, so we open sourced the project. So if you have an API that you're looking for some interactive tool to actually uh, expose your API, you can actually use IODocs. Uh, Cloud.com, uh, for instance, uses IODocs to uh, provide a sandbox for the API. So again, one, one click and I can actually try the API, and it gives me a response format on JSON or XML, whatever the support, uh, supported format is for that API. And I can look at it and I'm like, all right, this is what the data is, if I want to use it or not. Show me the code. I'm a developer. Uh, I do not like reading documentation. I actually understand code. So show me the code so I can actually help myself. Uh, developers just hate reading documentation. Give them code libraries. Uh, an example from Twilio with API libraries in pretty much every language. Uh, or give them code snippets. This is a great example from SoundCloud, for example. Uh, detailing if th this is very specific that you want to do with your API, for example, if create a client object with access token, here's a single line of code that you can actually use. These things are really helpful for developers. So think about that from, from a developer point of view. And again, finally, you have some sample apps. There's nothing better than having sample apps for your API. Uh, th that's, that's like the best Bible you can give a developer. Just, they can just help themselves. And then finally, you have to inspire them sometimes. Uh, developers sometimes are short on ideas. You can actually inspire them with things like having a partner showcase. You can actually show that these are the apps that have been built using your API. Here's what else we can we actually expect developers to do. Have some way of uh, building a community around that so the so developers can actually inspire each other. And then 
this is really important. Be available for them. So if the developers are actually on Stack Overflow, make sure that your team is actually following questions on Stack Overflow so developers don't feel out of place. When they see things like developers, there are, there are people actually helping, you, helping us out at Stack Overflow, for instance, they feel uh, they feel that they're, they're, not, they're not in this war alone. There are people to help them out, and we can actually use this API with comfort. Similar thing with Twitter. If questions are being asked on Twitter, please answer them. And make yourself available with other contact information. So if there's anything developers are looking for via email, answer those questions and make them feel comfortable. So finally, you have to make DX a priority. And the only way to do that is when it actually comes naturally from your company. When you actually feel for the developers, you step into the developer's shoes, and you start thinking from a developer mindset, all of these things, all these 10 things that I mentioned, they happen naturally. Because the minute you start thinking of it like a product, these things automatically fall in line. And you, you, you actually start doing those things. For instance, at Mastery, that, that comes naturally to us. We liked, we, we try to do things, as many things as we can to make to ease that developer pain, to do as many things as we can to ease that developer pain. Uh, I'm not sure if any, uh, pe if you heard here, but we we uh, partnered with Hacker League, which is a hackathon management platform, uh, and the whole idea behind that is again to make sure that we actually help developers and take it to the next level. So, finally, that's my contact information, uh, and I will put up this uh, deck and I will share that URL with you guys. Uh, I guess I'll open for questions. I will be the messenger. Yeah, go for it. Any question? I have to begin again. No, it's okay. So, for um, developers or non-developers within a company that might recognize this kind of stuff isn't happening. How would you, what's, what are some tips you would give for those folks to create the change organizationally to, to get to the point where they're checking all 10 of these boxes? To companies that it's not coming naturally? Yeah. They're not there yet, but they recognize it. All right. I guess the first is acknowledging that you're not there, obviously. And the second step is making, making sure that you have the right people on that, on that team working on the API that they actually understand the value of the API and the value the developers come bring to the, to the company. It's important you, if, if the company at its very core level does not appreciate developers, it becomes that much harder. Um, so having people who, to be honest, I think having people who are ex-developers who, who actually coded at some level, because you, then you have that empathy coming naturally. Uh, it makes it easier. I'm not saying that people who are not developers cannot actually uh, do that, but it makes it easier. Uh, but I think it starts from that having that empathy for developers uh, that I think is really important. Any questions? I have one. I have one about uh, Swift. You know, Swift was for the founder of Hagerly. Yes. So now you are partnering with them uh, you know, strongly, uh, right. closely. Uh, and um, so he said that developer evangelism is is uh, the job of developer evangelist is to make to make friends. He said that. He said yeah. that. He said that it's going to um, not to party, but just to make relations. So, uh, but as a, your company, as Mashri, you are also on the company side to because. So, how do you manage the relation to make developer evangelism? So to provide what API providers are making, but also give the feedback to to say to. To say to the API providers, hey guys, they don't use it the, the right way because I don't know design stuff is not good. So how do you manage that? So you change hats. You do, you do. Uh, but first off, I think I agree that with what Swift said that your the objective is to make friends. But I also think that the goal for a developer evangelist is actually to inspire people. When you're going and talking to these developers at hackathons, you actually cannot teach them to code. They already know that. What you're doing there is you're just Kindling that fire they have, right? You're just inspiring them to to actually take that, take it to the to another level. Give them some ideas about the APIs that, for example, Mashri has. Uh, they come up with ideas. We have these brainstorming sessions at hackathons, for instance, where developers are there but they don't know what API, what apps they can use. Now you brainstorm with them and you suggest that, hey, you're looking at this. Maybe you can use this API to enable that. 
Um, but to answer your second question, yes, you do switch hats. When I go to hackathons, I go as a developer evangelist uh, first, but I also am a fly on the wall. I'm getting all the feedback I can for our customers, for instance, that, hey, um, they were trying to use your API and it actually did not work. Um, they ended up wasting two hours on your API, so let's make sure that this actually works. So I'm also taking feedback for our customers, uh, but first, work, first job is evangelizing. And like I said, it's, it's evangelizing to me means you're just inspiring people, inspiring developers, and just helping out in whatever way you can. So it's so. developer mentoring, I guess you know? Mentoring, evangelist, you know? We could say that. Yeah. <laughs> we can take a last question. That's fine. Great. So cool. just to say that Amit will be uh, this weekend, because during API Days conference, we, we, we organize a hackathon this weekend called API Hack Day. So uh, it's a tour. Maybe you can talk uh, just a few minutes about what you do with API Hack Day worldwide. Sure. And then there will be one in Paris. Uh, uh, and if you go on the website of the conference, you go to register to API Hack Day, and you are able to see the, the, the hack day that will be made uh, this weekend. So, so yeah, but can you talk yeah, more about Sure. That? So uh, how many of you have actually been to a hackathon before? Woo. Sweet. So all the other people who have not, this weekend is your bet. So you should do that. Um, Hackathon is really getting developers and even non-developers together to build something really cool and awesome over a span of 48 hours in this case. Uh, so what will happen is you'll come to the Hackathon on day one, you'll mingle around, you'll exchange ideas, and on day two, you actually start building something. Uh, using APIs or no APIs, that's really your choice. You're not obligated to use any of the sponsor APIs. Um, you just come over. Uh, if nothing else, you learn something new. You learn to program if you're not a programmer. You learn to use a new API, or you learn, or you will get your uh, questions answered because you'll have lots of API people there. Um, API Hack Day is something that we have been doing with Twilio, SendGrid, uh, TalkBox for a while now, uh, and we're really happy that you were able to do this uh, with uh, Medi's help uh, with uh, API Days. So I would highly encourage you. It's free. Um, there will be food. There will be drinks. Yeah, there'll be drinks too. So yeah, if that's and a seller for you. And drones, and it's it will be also a civic hackathon. But there will be drones, Google glasses. There will be oh, it would be right. awesome. And their prizes too. Yeah, and also prizes, of course. Yeah. So a lot of partners. Thank you, Amit. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>